Okay, hello, this is Rock Hard Caucus. Uh, we are short one member today. It's just me, Natalie, and Evan tonight. Rest in peace, pouring out a 40-ounce malt liquor to uh, <laughs> commemorate Chuck's absence. <laughs> Chuck is the funniest one. <laughs> I know, it's going to be hard to carry on without him, but... Really? <laughs> okay, we're great though, we're, it's great. <laughs> We have no Chuck, and this is probably the driest topic we could possibly be talking about. The three less funny people talking about math. All right, so last time we were talking about how to caucus, and I I wanted people who listen to the show to ask us questions if there's anything that they feel they need clarified. And my brother-in-law, Jake Yachty, he's a listener to the show, and he sent a question about caucus math. And he said, does the state party publish the math for how delegates are assigned? In 2016, my precinct had around 70 people for Bernie and around 50 for Hillary. But because the precinct could only award four delegates, the math ended up assigning two to each. What? Hold on, hold on. I got to put on my Andrew Yang math hat before (laughs) we can (laughs) proceed any further. (laughs) You got it. (laughs) All right, I got it. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like there was so much of that fucking witchery where, um, like, tampering with the Iowa caucuses last time. It wouldn't be hard. <laughs> yeah, it's not even necessarily tampering. It's just, like, the rules make it so everything is all fucked up. Oh, yeah. And because in 2016 they never released the total vote numbers for anything, like, it's totally possible that Bernie actually won the popular vote. Why would they not? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I didn't realize how like undemocratic the nominating process was till I started to read about <laughs> um, the switch to, to the Iowa caucus. But it used to be basically party people just pick someone. Well, the thing right. is, too, is like they can't even get an accurate count because a lot of people just show up and then leave after a while because it's like <laughs> obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, it's total chaos. Uh, so to answer Jake's question, yes, the party does publish how the math works. Um if you recall the modules that I was looking at briefly <laughs> from Evan's email, <laughs> caucus training module number seven is all about the caucus math. Oh. Number seven. You have to get through six. You have to get through the first oh. six first, though. Yep. And if you want to check this out for yourself, you can go to iowademocrats.org slash 2020 dash caucus dash training dash module dash seven. <laughs> and <laughs> there's a 13 minute video explaining how all of this works. This is exactly the content that I desired. <laughs> Thank you, Iowa Democratic Party. Oh, my God. All right. So the first concept involved with how the delegates are assigned at each caucus is viability. Uh, viability means whether a preference group gets to elect any delegates. And whether they can carry a baby to term. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, this is, of course, based on the number of delegates from the precinct and the total number of caucus attendees. So the number of delegates that a precinct elects, that's based on the population of the precinct itself. I'm sure the numbers for that are posted somewhere as well. Uh, if your precinct is electing one delegate, then a preference group must exceed 50% to be viable. If you are electing two delegates, the viability threshold is 25% of the total number of caucus attendees. If there are three delegates to be elected, the viability threshold is 16.66%. <laughs> and for precincts that are electing four or more delegates, viability threshold is 15%. Um, And that's all just a data dump that will be more relevant later when we're discussing actual examples here. Right. I want to break it down by how many districts even have more than one delegate because... So if we apply this to Jake's scenario that he asked about, uh, he had about 120 attendees and they were electing four delegates. So a preference group must have at least 18 people to be viable and... As I was doing the math, like figuring out what's going on here, what I did not understand is that if the viability threshold is 18 people and they're electing four delegates and there are 120 people total, that means that six preference groups could be viable despite there being only four delegates you can elect. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
I hate math. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know where these percentages come from, but I can answer how this works later. All right, so getting into delegate allocation, which is, of course, how many delegates each preference group sends to the conventions. (sighs) (laughs) there are a couple of rules here to remember Uh, they want the numbers to be rounded to four decimal places (laughs) that's a reasonable amount i mean (laughs) and when calculating delegate allotment round up from 0.5 and round down if less than 0.5 which is you know the general rounding rules that that's how math works usually the formula is number of people in a preference group multiplied by the number of delegates the precinct is electing. You take the result of that and you divide it by the number of caucus attendees. So if we go back again to Jake's scenario, there are 70 Bernie voters. You multiply that by four delegates. That's 280 And if you divide 280 by the 120 attendees, that brings us to 2.3333. Again, we're rounding to four decimal places. Woo! Go Bernie! (laughs) (laughs) And then there were 50 Hillary voters. We multiply that times four. That's 200. Divide 200 by 120. You get 1.6667. Bernie's got more. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. So in Jake's we scenario. We got this, fam. <laughs> in Jake's scenario, we've got 2.3333 for Bernie, 1.6667 for Hillary. Okay? It seems like we won, right? Oh, yeah. We totally won. We kicked her ass, dude. <laughs> Welp. We got to round 2.3333 down to 2 and round 1.6667 up to 2. so that's what happened i I knew this shit involved rounding but it's even more ridiculous (laughs) like that's ridiculous (laughs) oh my god okay i feel like we also need to tell listeners that it's not hard and you don't have to do the math you just have to stand in the gym (laughs) oh yeah yeah. (laughs) oh yeah so i told my or my mom listened to our last caucus and i was trying to get her to caucus for bernie and you know she's older and has some health problems so it's kind of like hard thing to do and she's like i don't want to caucus anymore and i'm like sure you have to it's not that hard it's not as bad as we made it seem <laughs> like <laughs> i know we made it sound like you have to like walk across the desert with a single canteen but it's not, it's that not bad. actually that bad. it's not that bad you need to play this for her and say we truly think it's not that bad you no, don't i'm gonna to make her go so map. she doesn't <laughs> i mean <laughs> As a Bernie bro, I'm going to make my mom go caucus, you know? (laughs) That's doing misogyny. (laughs) Is it? All right. So, yeah, you don't need to know this math, but I feel like the more people we have at these precincts who know how the math works and are paying attention, the better. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, this is really important, actually. (laughs) But you don't have to. You could just stand in the gym. But... If you want to, you should definitely try I mean, to learn how to do this. I mean, the math roughly works out that more people is better. But, I mean, <laughs> when there's only a delegate or two delegates or three delegates to be divvied up, it's uh, a little more complicated. Right. Yeah, like in in Jake's case, Bernie won two-thirds more of a delegate, and it just gets wiped out, and they just each get two. Yeah, seems fair. Seems fair. Seems reasonable. <laughs> It's good, good way to run your country. All right, so there are a bunch of weird examples that they put in that 13-minute video to just sort of uh, look at these test cases and tell you what needs to happen when weird circumstances arise. So this is going to be pretty dry again, but it's kind of infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> you sound so sad, Justin. <laughs> Carry on, brother. Uh, This is what I referred to earlier. What happens when rounding causes too many or too few delegates? So like I mentioned earlier, the the viability threshold in Jake's case means that six different preference groups could be viable in a precinct that's only electing four delegates. So here's a similar example that they give in the video. A caucus has 65 participants and is electing eight delegates. After realignment, the groups are Group A, 22 members, 
and the math works out to 2.7077 delegates, rounds up to three delegates. Okay, I'm going to skip some of the boring math here. Group B has 16 members. They end up with two delegates. Group C, 13 members. They also end up with two. Group D has 14 members and also end up with two delegates. So uh, viability threshold at this precinct is 10. So every group is viable. And the rounded allocation adds up to nine delegates. And again, they're only electing eight. So in this case, the smallest group here was group C with 13 members. And they lose a delegate. They lose one delegate. (laughs) (laughs) Sucks for them. (laughs) So despite having only... Assuming that candidate is not Bernie. (laughs) Despite group C having only one member fewer than group D, they get half the delegates. And you said the group A had 20, right? Group A had 22 members. 22. Yeah. But that's still less, that's a third, essentially a third of, almost a third, a little bit more than a third of the total thing. But they got, what, four or three? They got three delegates. So that, out of seven. Out of eight, actually. Out of eight, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, there's so many numbers flying around. Oh, (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) This is, this is hard to follow. (laughs) Yeah, I know, I know. And okay, then they gave us uh, one more example here in this situation. Uh, a caucus has 17 participants and is electing three delegates. The totals here Group A has 10 members. They end up with two delegates. Group B has four members. They end up with one. Group C has three members. They also end up with one delegate. Are these real life examples? Because, um, like, aren't the delegates proportioned according to population so shouldn't there be more people if they're like 13 people for three delegates i would hope so but i it all just depends on like who shows up i guess i guess yeah i guess so but isn't it based on like past results or i i I guess maybe you don't have that available but yeah that part i don't know like how are the delegates uh (laughs) how are the delegates assigned to each precinct I assume that's by population, but yeah, I don't have that either. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna have to do another guess. follow-up episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, target areas that have high population but low turnout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, cool. All right. So the viability threshold in this example is three. So all three of the preference groups are viable, and the rounded allocation added up to four delegates. The caucus is only electing three. In this case. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rule that says a viable preference group cannot lose their only delegate in a scenario like this. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's the tyranny of the majority, you know. You can't have that. So, I mean, if you're viable, you get one. It's kind of like a participation trophy. Right. So, in this case, uh group A had 2, B had 1, C had 1 delegate, and because Neither group B or C can lose their only delegate. That means group A has to get rid of their extra delegate. So these three groups, which were, again, 10 members versus four members versus three members, all three elect one delegate in this scenario. (laughs) Beautiful. (laughs) Group A has more than both of the other groups combined and elects the same number of delegates. Just one. That's fucked. You can imagine how a, an accumulation of these things would lead to like a completely rigged election. Yeah, exactly. And in 2016, like the results it's were so close. Close enough. <laughs> yes. Didn't I feel like they reported it for Clinton and stuff, and now they're just like, oh, it was tied. Yeah, they did do that actually. Didn't they? Yeah. Basically, they called change, it. I mean, they called it for Clinton, and they basically got like an equal number of delegates. Yes. What if we all just voted? And then that was the number. Whatever the biggest number was (laughs) is who wins. (laughs) Big number eats small number. Yeah. What if we just vote? (laughs) Yeah. Or even if it was proportional, like we can still do the dumb convention crap, but just like take the raw number. Yeah, yeah. They can (laughs) they can be representatives of the vote or whatever, you know. You can go to your cool convention and, you know, wear your nicest outfit. (laughs) <laughs> show off for all of your democratic friends 
<laughs> but you don't get to decide. I mean, <laughs> the people decide, right? Yeah, the way it's all just cut up into these tiny precincts and just such a small number, like this example they gave us, just 17 right. people. <laughs> right, and knowing like rural Iowa, that's like going to be the case in like, I mean, I would love to look at real world examples, but yeah, I mean, it's rural Iowa. There's going to be places, and rural I- I was voting for Democrats, <laughs> there's going to be some just, <laughs> some precincts that only have <laughs> yeah. like five or ten people. It, it's not, yeah, it's reality. Yeah. So th- that was two examples where the uh, the math at the end ended up with more delegates than the caucus is electing. They give us a couple here of, uh, or just one actually, one example here where the math adds up to too few delegates. So here's this example. A caucus has 189 participants and is electing six delegates. After realignment, the groups are Group A, 78 members, which equals 2.4762 delegates. (laughs) (laughs) Group B, 74 members. This adds up to 2.3492 delegates. Group C, 37 members, which adds up to 1.1746 delegates. All three of these groups are viable. Uh, the allocation equals five delegates, but again, the caucus is electing six. Okay, the math here, it was 2.4762 for the first one, 2.3492 for the second one, 1.1746 for the third one. So you just give an extra one to the largest group, right? Yes. Uh, it says here, group A gains one delegate, since they are closest to the next whole number delegate after rounding. Woo! Closest <laughs> to the next whole number delegate after rounding. Right. Yes, go burn it! <laughs> <laughs> and again, the difference between group A and B was four people out of a room of 189, and the delegate math had them, again, 2.4762 versus 2.3492. <laughs> <laughs> so just like Man. a 0.1 difference in the delegate math gave group a an additional delegate four people out of 189 i think that's like a two percent difference <laughs> <laughs> math is fun man yeah justin you're so smart <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> I'm just reading screenshots from a video that I watched. <laughs> I know, but you watched it. <laughs> I didn't watch a fucking but, but video. But who, who knows this shit, honestly? <laughs> I just go where the Bernie people tell me where to stand. That's what I did too, and now I'm realizing I should have <laughs> been smarter like Justin, and then I could watch for irregularities, but I'm probably still just going to sit on my phone while I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to be watching for irregularities. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then they, uh, what happens if there's a tie? Now, this is a big one. All right, they gave us an example here. What if there is a tie in the delicate allocation math? <laughs> Do you know what the answer is? Uh, coin flip? Of coin flip. It's less specific than that, even. <laughs> oh, it's a game... Uh, a game of chance. Game yes. of ch- chance. <laughs> the rules state. The rules state. A game of chance will determine <laughs> which group gets the extra delegates. <laughs> Rock paper scissors. Does that count? <laughs> what a not normal or way to that, do democracy. It's not not considered a game of chance because there's only <laughs> three outcomes. What's the craziest game of chance someone could pick? <laughs> Like, instead of a coin flip. They have a roulette wheel, and red is Bernie, and black is Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, like, a French, a very French guy running the table, and he <laughs> asks the uh, Bernie, like, campaign manager, or campaign uh, person, <laughs> which color they choose. <laughs> well, that's only if your uh, caucus is held at the local casino. Yeah. Otherwise, that's too difficult to set up. His mustache is very slick. All right, so the example is a caucus has 250 participants and is electing five delegates. The math here ends up with 125 members for each group, so it's evenly divided. The formula gives us 2.5 delegates for each one. And because you have to round up, each of them get three. (laughs) That adds up to six, which is more than five. (laughs) (laughs) 
Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. One group must lose a delegate. However, since both are statistically tied, group A and group B must participate in a game of chance, i.e. coin toss. The loser of the game of chance will lose one delegate. <laughs> we should we should do the King Solomon thing and say which which side is willing to tear the <laughs> delegate in half. <laughs> and the one who's, <laughs> who says that that's not right is the one who deserves it. <laughs> we just, <laughs> just cut the delegate into two pieces. It sh- honestly, it should come down who can bequeath the Iowa Democratic Party the biggest gift. <laughs> it's like, bring me your golden calves. I kind of agree with Natalie's solution more than a coin toss, because at least there's some sort of moral judgment involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is just a lot tell better. them you have to cut a human being in half, and <laughs> the one who objects wins. So we're going to lose then. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of sticks in my craw here is like, what does viability mean? (laughs) Because there are cases where, like I mentioned earlier in Jake's scenario, six preference groups could be viable in his situation, where a caucus is only electing four delegates. And in that case, the smallest viable groups must realign until there are no more viable candidates than there are delegates to elect, which in my mind means... They weren't fucking viable then. <laughs> right. Yeah. Man, if this was an MMORPG, people would be so mad. <laughs> but since it's what politics. What does that mean? What is that? M- massively multiplayer online role playing game. Oh, like, wow. Yes. Like World of Warcraft. We're too many acronyms going on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for the over acronym. There's way too much RNG involved. <laughs> yeah, there's in the way too much <laughs> RNG, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a frame perfect skip right here. <laughs> we get an extra delegate. <laughs> Hillary loses a delegate, but we we have to do the math right. Otherwise, it's not going to work. All right, roll for greed. <laughs> <laughs> roll for greed. <laughs> <laughs> because of the viability thing just bothers me. I came up with a scenario just to make everyone really upset (laughs) (laughs) that's not a thing that we usually do (laughs) for literally everyone to be upset (laughs) okay all right so here's a a precinct situation that i conjured up there are a hundred participants caucusing and this precinct elects four delegates the math there works out to a viability threshold of 15 percent so if a preference group has more than 15 members, they are viable at this caucus. So, in my imaginary scenario, here's how the preference groups break down. This is in 2020, so I'm using candidate names now. (laughs) Hell yeah. All right, the Joe Biden preference group, they have 16 members. The Pete Buttigieg preference group, they have 16 members. The Tulsi Gabbard preference group has 16 members. Where'd you find them? <laughs> well, it may not be totally realistic, <laughs> but it's this is a mathematically possible scenario, if okay. not like... I'll, f- <laughs> I'll play along, I'll play along. All right. <laughs> All right, so so far, Biden, Buttigieg, Gabbard, 16 members each. The uh, Elizabeth Warren preference group has 16 members. The Andrew Yang preference group has 16 members. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bernie Sanders preference group has 20 members. What about Bloomberg? Well, he's not running in <laughs> Iowa. Don't forget. It doesn't mean you can't vote for him. What about Devon can, Patrick? Wait, does it mean you can't vote for him? <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know how that works. I'm because, pretty sure you like, can. I don't think yeah. it's like, it's not like a primary where it's like you have registered. I mean, get on the ballot. I don't know. Whatever. Well, I don't know. Is it? <laughs> Is it too late to get on the ballot if we don't have ballots? Yeah, we don't have ballots. So yeah. like, why couldn't someone just say, I'm going to vote for Bloomberg? Yeah, isn't that just a write-in? They could just go stand by themselves and then... I, I'm pretty sure you can. In that case, can I caucus for Kucinich? <laughs> oh, I love Dennis Kucinich. I love yeah. him. Yeah, he Him was... and Ralph Nader. I love them. Hell yeah, dude. Seatbelts rule. <laughs> they do rule, though. Yeah. He did such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the delegate allocation formula says that the Bernie Sanders preference group, they get 20 times 4, that's 80, 
divide 80 by 100, 0.8. So they get 0.8 delegates. That rounds up to one. All right, Bernie gets one (laughs) delegate. Okay, the Biden, Buttigieg, Gabbard, Warren, and Yang preference groups, again, they each had 16 members. We multiply that by four. Four, again, is the number of delegates that the precinct is electing. So we multiply 16 by four. Uh, I don't remember what that adds up to. Oh, yeah, 64. Divide 64 by 100. And 100, again, was the number of participants participating in the caucus. Okay, so that calculates to 0.64. Okay? Mm -hmm. That rounds up to uh, one. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So... (laughs) Dan, can you repeat that for every one of them, please? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just keep saying the same thing over. All right, so so Bernie with his point eight at the end of the formula, he gets one delegate. Biden, Buttigieg, Gabbard, Warren, and Yang with their point six four, they each get one delegate. <laughs> All right, so that's that's uh, six different preference groups, each getting one delegate in a precinct that is only electing four delegates. All right, so we've got more viable groups than we have available delegates. The smallest groups must realign. That's what the the rules say. However, we have a five-way tie for the smallest group because everyone but Bernie got 16 voters. What happens now? Fight to death. All of them are the smallest group, so all of them get eliminated and Bernie gets every delegate. (laughs) Yes. That's the only fair way to do it. (laughs) No, they need to do a Hunger Games. That's sort of what I'm thinking happens that would be, at this point. That would be cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have a five-way tie for the smallest group. And then the birdie people will just sit in the corner and watch. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm They're down with this. I'm, I'm down with like this. Crazy. I think this is awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is great. <laughs> at this point, I assume that everybody in the smaller groups refuses to move because... Like, because fuck you. That's because why. they have yeah. strongly <laughs> held beliefs. Yeah, because fuck you. You think the the Tulsi voters are just gonna voluntarily realign yeah. themselves when they're no, in a five way? They're in a five way tie for second place. No way. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That would be fucking. That would be turning your back on your sacred duty to Tulsi. So at this point, I think that the contest is now just about how long. Each individual person can, en- <laughs> can endure standing around <laughs> in a high school gym. <laughs> it's an endurance. That's game. awesome. <laughs> it has to be though, right? Like just yeah. fight, fight until someone gives up. Yeah. So I would assume that at the end of the night, we got to get rid of two of these candidates. I'm gonna guess that the end result would be Bernie gets one because he already had one, and then. The Tulsi people definitely aren't moving. They get one delegate as well. Uh, the Yang contingent also, they get one. And then the Biden, Buttigieg, the Biden and people, Warren people. <laughs> they're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, Going home. <laughs> they do. They have to take their kids to fancy daycare in the morning. <laughs> Fucking tired. I feel like the Biden people are just like, fuck it, I'm going to the bar, grabbing a drink. <laughs> what would the Buttigieg people do? Uh, they have like Downton Abbey or something to watch, <laughs> like some, <Yes. laughs> some some TV show that they can't miss. So as I mentioned, this is like not a likely scenario, but a completely mathematically possible scenario that the Iowa caucus rules allow for, and I feel like don't really have a satisfactory resolution to. So it's just going to be chaos if something like this occurs. Well, it's just going to, it'll be Tulsi people that win. Yeah, I mean, this just... They just have to, because Tulsi's the only people that won't go join another group. Yeah, you got to have strong resolve to caucus. It's not for the faint of heart. (laughs) No, but really, it's not that bad. You just stand in the gym. It's, you don't have to know any of this if you don't want to. You don't. It's good to know things, but it's so easy to caucus and not that bad at all. You just sit on your phone and wait for them to come around and count you. Yeah, they might even have seating for you. You might be able to sit down. It's it's beautiful. Well, I sat on the floor, but... (laughs) Did I ever tell you guys that (laughs) at my 2016 caucus, the Hillary group had a room full of chairs and the Bernie group had no chairs? (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) No way! 
shit. Yeah, this was at Coralville <laughs> City Hall, and the Clinton camp they <laughs> they claimed they claimed like the actual city hall room where there's like a bunch of seating, <laughs> and we were just in this oh, big man. this big lobby. Oh, that's that's <laughs> that's so one hundred percent a handshake deal with some local official. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way that that wasn't like a favor. <laughs> For for sure, that's hundred thousand like, totally in, intentional. Yeah, that's mad Hillary energy. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you recall, the Dvorskys were leading the Clinton camp at my precinct. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, <laughs> uh, there's no Kamala camp anymore. So. R.I.P. Don't poach their staffers. <laughs> Don't poach their staffers. You got to let them mourn. It's a bad idea. Alone. They're so bad. Leave them alone. I, I highly suggest leaving any Kamala Harris supporters alone. We haven't talked about it since Kamala has been out of the race. Yeah, I was going to ask if we've even done an episode since she dropped out. I don't think so. All right. Well, Iowa people, I suggest looking up Sue Dvorsky's Twitter. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I followed her after the last episode. Oh, yeah. I, I just remembered I retweeted her on, on the show account. <laughs> I think I I think I think heckled her a little bit, but I don't remember. That's, that's good. Plausible deniability. <laughs> All right. Well, that's caucus math. Again, you don't need to be thinking about this, but my suggestion for you is to assume everybody who is not in the Bernie preference group at your caucus is out to get you and assume they are going to try to <laughs> <laughs> they're going to try to play the math for their own gain and you need to be steadfast in your opposition to them yeah i feel like bernie's people have the most enduring floor and they will not leave there either and see themselves get screwed over that's right yeah. you go into caucus season with just like ruthless pursuit of one goal electing bernie as president of the united states that's right <laughs> i'll have fucking sleepover in the high school gym i can i can outlast <laughs> yep outplay outwit outlast <laughs> iowa caucus survivor <laughs> as of this recording uh we have 55 days until the iowa caucus that's 55 days that you can be pumping iron and uh doing your cardio <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> Just getting getting <laughs> totally ripped and pumped and <laughs> becoming an Antifa super soldier. <laughs> Make yourself look like John Delaney. <laughs> yeah, dude. Ready for whatever comes at you at the caucus. You need a rock hard body of steel ready to <laughs> ward off the attacks of the Pete army. Yeah. Because they're not putting in the work like we are. <laughs> All right, so I want to thank our five Patreon subscribers for <laughs> signing up. We love you so much. Thank you That's so much. That's so much more than I expected, so we appreciate it so much. That's so nice of you. Yeah, we hit our first goal, which was $12 a month to pay for our SoundCloud. We hit that within the first like 24 hours, which is pretty great. Thank you guys for that. I think it's time for us to set another goal for our monthly subscriptions. Oh, boy. (laughs) And my thoughts are the next goal should be for $30 a month. And at that point, I will start reading (laughs) (laughs) Joseph Joseph Dobrian's first novel, Willie Wilden, which is the one. Yes. I might chip in for that. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I will read it, too. Because I kind of, I'm curious. Yeah, I kind of want to read it, too. But I guess there's only, we can't give him money, so, (laughs) like... I think I'm the only one that has access yeah, to Yeah, I don't think copy. I can find any at the Des Moines Public Library. Yeah. <laughs> I got a special order. I got to fill out a slip at the library. <laughs> Do an interlibrary loan for that. Oh, man. <laughs> and in the meantime, uh, Natalie has some premium content in the pipeline. Do you want to tease that at all, Natalie? Um, it's myself and Stella Hart, who you may remember from um, Toxic Femininity. The soup episode. <laughs> <laughs> you, say, you say femininity? <laughs> Anatomy. It's the soup episode. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the soup episode. <laughs> um, we are going to do a show about um, women and politics, and we are going to pick a secret topic and a public topic to explain to one another. So um, my public talking 
is the relationship between multi-level marketing and politics. And hers is how to criticize candidates um, without being sexist. And then we have two secret ones. And mine's really funny and offensive. <laughs> so you should you should pay us money so you can hear it. <laughs> nice. We're hiding all the problematic content behind a paywall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My content is honestly pretty problematic. <laughs> I don't care. Women being problematic, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> See, women can do things that men can do. I'm looking forward to I it. I don't know. If you're paying for us, you clearly think our shtick is okay and... Yeah, it's just this, but a little more offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Edgy content. <laughs> Hell yeah. Play some new metal music again. Oh, but yeah. For the women this time. <laughs> new metal for the ladies. <laughs> if anyone has suggestions for theme music, please tweet it at me. I have a new handle like I do every other day. It's an old it's handle, beeping. though, isn't it? <laughs> you finally cycle back around. <laughs> I circle back around. It's Weeping Eris. And you should tweet at me if you have music ideas or topics. Yes. All right. Well, I think that wraps things up for our caucus math mega episode. (laughs) (laughs) All right. uh, Thanks, Evan and Natalie, for joining me for this very rare Tuesday night recording. And oh, yeah. Next time we'll we'll get Chuck back in the mix. Uh, R.I.P. to a fallen soldier. (laughs) <laughs> that was actually pretty interesting, Justin. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, enlightening. Good. And if any listeners have any other follow-up questions for how the minutia of the ridiculous Iowa caucus works, let me know, and I'll do some more research and put a bunch of numbers in front of me and then read them off of my screen into a microphone. <laughs> 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 we value the service that you provide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later. Peace out. What you know about mad, what you know about mad, what you know about mad, hey, don't you know I represent mad lead when I add shorty subtract, freshman backpack, where I hold in all my work at, what you know about mad, what you know about mad, what you know about mad, I know all about mad, the answer's 44, it's real easy cause of sig figs, you got 45, you rounded high, your answer's too